When I pull up on you, then I might swear, ayy. Double off deuce, deuce, ayy. That you might work, ayy. When I pull up on you, then I might swear, ayy. Double off deuce, deuce, ayy. That you might work, ayy. That you might work. Welcome back to another episode of the Michelle Matters Podcast. I'm Jocks Michelle. And I'm Jackie Michelle. Welcome back. What's up? Nothing. We're episode 10. Is it? Yeah. Oh, for yeah. For sure. I think it's episode 10. Yes. Um, didn't think we'd make it this far, but uh, yeah. first milestone, I guess. Mm-hmm. This is kind of like like our schedule now. Like, yeah. It's a part of what we do. <laughs> yeah. Fitting it in is always like, when are we going to record this week? It's always on a Sunday. For some reason. Yeah. We, I mean, because yesterday was kind of... Bi- mm. I don't know. We've both been pretty sick, so... Well, you have been sick. Yeah, I was like, definitely oh. sick. Um, and then you you think that I gave you my sickness, but... That's usually how it works. That's just life, I guess. Yeah. Um, so you can't complain. No. But um, I feel better now. Already. Do you? Yeah, do like you? I have my hot water here. Well, I have hot tea. <clears throat> And, uh, I'm gonna try to to limit me clearing my throat as much as possible. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man. I don't know. This cold kind of lasted a little bit longer than usual. Mm-hmm. At you least for me. From a weekend getaway. Yeah. And then you were sick the whole week. Like you took me to one of the most <laughs> remote part. Like I never been to. I took you there. Yeah. Yeah. For okay. sure. We. Okay, the original plan was we were going to go see my brother. Mm-hmm. Um, my brother lives in Fort Myers. Mm-hmm. Um, Just put it on his business. Huh? Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, that's where he went to school. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jackie couldn't just stay in Fort Myers. She, I wanted to explore something different. Yeah. So she took me to a place called Bokelia. I didn't even know what that place was. Yeah, I mean, if you ever get a chance, look it up. And like when you Google, because I Google mapped it, right? And I, it is like the most like. It's as close to the edge of Florida, I think, you could get west-wise, pretty mm-hmm. much. Um, I mean, it's a... It's like an island. Yeah, it's like an island place. It kind of reminds me of Key West. Um, but not as lively. Yeah. It's a it's a it's poor man's quiet. version of, of Key West. <laughs> super a very, dark. A very like poor man's no version. no street lights. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But within that, we, we were there. <clears throat> we went to Fort Myers, obviously. Sarasota. Yeah, because oh, we ended up we ended up visiting uh, Jackie's goddaughter. Mm-hmm. It was her birthday. Yeah, shout um, out to Sadie. And on our way back down from visiting her goddaughter, we stopped in Sarasota. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had, I know people from Sarasota, but I've not actually been there. No, I mean it wasn't bad. No, it's really nice. Um, it looked like if you have money, it'd probably be a, a decent place to like get retire. away and retire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But just for the visit, it was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a nice little, little, you know, break, I guess. Yeah. Um, we ended up not even seeing my brother. No. No, the irresponsible person that he is. <laughs> he, uh, had a trip planned himself out of town that weekend. Yeah. And he didn't really think to tell me. Um, but anyway, I mean, it was fun regardless. Yeah. Um, got to get away. Uh, said a nice little Airbnb, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'd go there again. No, it was nice <laughs> to see. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'd go back. Yeah, but it's something you know I could cross off. Like, you know, we've been to Bokelio. I should have got a shirt. <laughs> but uh, I mean, what else did we do? Um, oh, that that trip was also uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, we. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I don't want to say we. We definitely argued. Yes, right? we argued so, on the way back. And in hindsight, the argument was so petty. Mm-hmm. Like they arguments always are. Like that's easy. nah, nah, not always. I mean, <laughs> unless you are like, you know, going through a terrible it. person. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, going back, it was it was super petty. I'm not even like I won't even repeat it because it was that stupid. <laughs> yeah, but it was one of those like you make up like right after. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I definitely was holding on to it for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think I want to say so. The, it happened on Sunday. Yeah, it happened on Sunday. So we were on our way to breakfast. And, like, I'm driving, like, I'm just, like, not even looking over to the side. Like, I'm mad. <laughs> I'm not looking over. And finally, like, I think you asked me, like, oh, are you okay? <laughs> kind of let go. You sure? I feel I, like it was in the reverse. You think it was the reverse? Yeah. Like, I was the one that was not talking. You know, you know what it was? I, w- I wasn't happy heading to breakfast. We had breakfast, whatever. 
Then when we were leaving breakfast, mm-hmm. I feel like I had, you know, by the time I ate and whatever, I was over it. Yeah. But then I guess I wasn't. He was picking up steam during the <laughs> meal. And and once we got out of the restaurant, you had that sour face. I felt the side eye. I was like, oh, it's going to be a, a long ride back. All right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just it was just a crazy day. I mean, it's just awkward. Just you got to be in the car with someone and you having an argument. It's like yeah. a three three hour car drive. Yeah. And you just got to. I just feel the side eye just piercing me. I'm like, I'm not no, even I wasn't up. even worried. I was just paying attention to the road. Nah, you was hot. But, yeah, but I was paying attention to the road. It was yeah. raining. It was crazy. Yeah. But um, I mean, we ended up, I guess, making up. Yeah. Um, you don't have no choice. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> now nah, you you got a choice. You, you, you can hold, choice. you can hold, hold that hate in your heart. Well, but we typically always. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't like carrying like yeah. arguments. Like, yeah, I I'd mean, be able to carry it. Yeah, I'm like, but we in a car. We don't got nowhere to go. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, let's talk about this. We yeah. talked about it. Mm-hmm. But um, so yeah, y'all couples know what we're talking about. But um, <laughs> but yeah, we all argue. But yeah, um, so it's been raining like, a lot. all week. Like and I don't, I think it's everywhere. Like, but definitely down in Miami area, mm-hmm. it's been like super gloomy. I don't remember the last time I seen like the sun. Yeah, um, it's been raining all week, nasty weather, um, and then to be sick in this weather was just trash. Well, it's actually nice because then you could just stay in bed. I guess well, you we worked. Didn't, you didn't want to. I don't really have a choice anymore in life. Like I gotta. But like this weekend, you could have stayed in bed. No, I couldn't. When Saturday? I feel like I had something to do Saturday. Mm, You were in bed for a little bit, and then went out. Yeah, you woke me up because I I I feel you moving around. You're watching the royal wedding. Oh, Um, that was like way early in the morning. Yeah, I know. That's why I can't. That's why I can't stay. I mean, at night we went out, um, but yeah, we went to a graduation this weekend too. Yeah, I mean, your boys. Yeah, so my basketball boys, I had eight graduate, mm-hmm. um, so that was cool. I always like to to see them move on, and, and it's always tough to lose a group, but it was good, and you know, I got to watch them all graduate. Hopefully, they're all successful in life. You yeah, know? I always like to keep tabs on them, so. That was another milestone, I guess, to have another group graduate. Mm-hmm. So that's always fun. Um, then I had like a girls' day here, even though it was raining. Yeah. So yeah, they nice. took over the house. I was like locked in the room for like. We were not co- locked in the room. I watched half you a season chose. of Black Lightning because I couldn't go anywhere else. You chose to stay. Y'all make me feel like an outsider in my house. <laughs> I'd be tiptoeing around the house like I don't pay mortgage. Well, you came out. We had snacks and we had like. You know, yeah. you joined y'all a let me bit eat. Of the yeah, y'all let me eat, mm-hmm. and then I told me to go back in the room. So yeah, it's girl day, so. and you're gonna have another one today. Yeah, um, after we record. So, um, I think that's been it. Yeah, it's been crazy. Another thing we've done, we kind of we're gonna play around with the the uh, the way we structure the podcast a little bit. I think we're gonna cancel the Michelle Matter, the hot topic. For a little yeah, while. Why would you cancel the Michelle? Yeah, no, no. I mean, that's the point of the podcast. But um, I think so from now, we're just, you know, going to do our little recap. And then yeah. we'll probably just jump right into either our guest or um, our, topic. our hot topic. Or no, not hot topic. Our Michelle our main Manor. topic, yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, we're just over celebrities, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and it kind of shortens out. I know the podcast get a little long sometimes. Yeah. So that's another way to shorten it up and try to keep it a little concise so mm-hmm. you can listen on your drives and whatnot. So, yeah. Yes. I guess. Um, oh, we do have else? some feedback. Oh, go ahead. From our previous episodes. Um, so, Shalencia commented from episode nine um, with the Etienne's that it was nice to know that there are young couples out here that are working for themselves and making it work. I also appreciated that they will teach their kids about where they come from and continue their consciousness and relationship to their culture. So, thanks for listening. Uh, Maggie, on episode 8 with the SAP, she said she loved it. It was a great topic. We heard a lot um, back from that episode. Yeah. Um, and just people being touched by their story. Um, and I wanted to ask you what some of your takeaways were from that whole <clears throat> series, I guess. Um, 
I think one of the the big things we learned, well, that I learned at least from the parents series, was the importance of family. Mm. I think from my sister to the Saps and Etienne's, like everyone's like super reliant on their family. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you don't, you know, you never want to take people for granted, but like it's just another reason why you know it's good to maintain good relationships with your family because you will need them. Like once you move out, it's not. It doesn't just stop there. Um, so I think that was a big one. And I'm trying to think what was another big take or a common theme um, that I got. Um, at least from like the Etienne's, like it's very, uh, you know, they, they, they work really well as a unit. I think that's, I mean, you know, and they're very like intentional on date nights and all that stuff. I think that was really key. Like, you know, that even with, one kid and another kid on the way that they still find time to to have their date nights and all Every that. Every week. And, yeah. Yeah. And consistently. That. And that's more than nothing. We don't have no kids. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, we do. But like, <laughs> we'll just either have it at home or like. Well, yeah. <laughs> but just the, the intentionality of yeah, it. Yeah. Like, you good. know, they make sure like even if they just leave them with the sitter for a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Um, but they always find a way to get that in. And like work it within their schedule. Yeah. And it's not necessarily a Saturday night. It can be a Thursday afternoon or something. Yeah. And then like. I guess from the steps, like how involved like fathers still can be, mm-hmm. um, and then Judy, you just, I mean, I, I love Judy, but you we know, know her. yeah. So that, that story is like it's so much part of my life. Like I, I'm yeah. kind of over it, but yeah. And London's also like an adult, older, yeah, an adult. Yeah, she's like a little adult. She's older, so it's not like um, the same dynamic yeah. as the steps and the Etienne's. What about you? Um, what you said for sure, and then also that like it's just possible, yeah, like, working for yourself, and you know, you can still travel, you can still go out, you can still like have time with your kid. Yeah, and, who would have thought you could live a normal life? Yeah, like it's okay, your life doesn't end <laughs> yeah. when you have kids. <laughs> no, yeah, that's true. You know what? I think, yeah, I think that's the takeaway mm-hmm. your life doesn't end when you have kids, yeah. So, so it's nice. Yeah. Because you hear so many times, like, people will put out, like, you know, that they're expecting or something. It's like, oh, well, there goes your sleep. Or yeah. there goes your life. Like, uh, no, nah, okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure your sleep does go, but your life doesn't <laughs> yeah, have to sleep, end. Yeah, your sleep, but I mean, you're an adult. Like, I don't know many, kid, like, people our age that are sleeping, like, an average, you know, no, like, but that eight hours. The sleep that I hear from parents is it's not even close to average. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. But I mean, like. Come on. Like, we're used to not sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> if you have something going on with your life, you're probably not sleeping anyway. Yeah. So. Anyway, so yeah, um, let us know your takeaways. I know some of you guys already did. Um, subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Oh, we're sad. We're what? doing that now. Because, no, I'm just. Because, <laughs> like, I-, I like getting comments and stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like to hear the feedback. Yeah. And it's always surprising. Like, good to hear, like, somebody you didn't expect to be listening. Mm-hmm. And they were like, hey, you know, I love the podcast. I'm like, you listen? You listen, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, you can send us comments on SoundCloud or obviously on the gram at <laughs> Jackie I. Michelle or Twitter at Coach Docs because I'm, I'm not really on Twitter. Like and I don't that. use Instagram. Yep. So just to stop people's pictures. <laughs> but anyway. All, All right. right. So let's go to the Michelle Matter. Me, I'm super fly. Super duper fly. Super I duper fly. Me, I'm super fly. Super duper fly. Super duper fly. Me, I'm super fly. Super duper fly. Me, I'm super fly. It's my window. All right. So this week, um, especially after like the graduation. That we well, we only attended one graduation, but a lot of the speeches made me think. Um, and also, one of my friends just graduated and it's a doctor now, so I don't know, it made me think of like careers and what people decide to do with their lives and how they come to that conclusion. Um, and some people, when I tell them what I do, they're like, What? does that even mean so (laughs) i wanted to talk to you about careers and maybe like that'll open other people's eyes and like your your basketball boys you know to see maybe what they would want to do as well so did you always know what you wanted to do 
<laughs> as a career? No. Um, well, like as a kid. Yeah, I mean, as a kid, I mean, you know, you, you don't know any better. You want to do everything, like. Mm-hmm. Um, I think growing up, the first job I remember, I wanted to be uh, a marine biologist when I was a kid. Granted, what? <laughs> yeah, for real. Like even back then, like I didn't know how to swim. I didn't really know what they did. You still don't know how to swim. I know how to swim. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, but I just remember it's because a girl in my class that, of course, you know that I like, she said she wanted to be a marine biologist. Mm. And I was like, bet, this is going to be easy. I'm going to be a marine biologist. We're going to get married and live happily ever after. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> for the longest, I thought I wanted to be a marine biologist. Then I think the older I got, uh, I kind of felt like, I wanted to do something in business. I didn't know what. Um, I always felt like I was thinking of some sort of, of like business or like I used to sell CDs. I used to sell like chips and stuff at school. Um, oh boy. Yeah. So I always felt like, you know, I had a, a pretty good like mind for business. Um, I ended up studying it in school and I do nothing close to business now. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I still, you know, I don't regret any of it, but yeah. Um, so as comparative to like what I do now, I had no idea what I was going to be yeah. growing up. Which I is why so I wanted off. to ask you. Cause I feel like we have different stories. We do. Like for me, I always knew. Yeah. Like, at least, I mean, it changed, but I always had like, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I have to get there. And then for you, it was just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to go to school. But I mean, I know it's going to be in the realm of this. I just don't know what I'm going to actually do. Yeah. But that didn't stop you from, like, doing things. Yeah. You know? I mean... To find out what that was. Like, and and looking back, I kind of figured, like, this could have been my career path from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I just fought it because... Because your dad. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. So, I work in the same line of work as my dad. Um, and uh, that's actually the first job I ever had. Does he uh, like that? Does my dad like it? Mm-hmm. He loves it. Mm-hmm. Um, but so so let me start off, I guess. I Should I describe what we do first? Sure. So my occupation <laughs> is I'm a project manager. Um, I don't like getting into too much detail because it's like difficult. Like not difficult. It's difficult to explain. Like when I tell people, they're like, huh? But <laughs> pretty much like. Anytime you see like a traffic signal or like one of the big like street lights on the side of the street, like that's what we do. We construct those um, and we install them all across, you know, Dade Broward and and the Palm Beaches and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, And like my job is to manage the project, like make sure we have the right people there, the right materials, um, scheduling, all that stuff. Budget. Yeah, stuff like that. (laughs) But I guess that's like the simple way of explaining what I do. Um, so yeah, that that's what I do now. My first job. Well, when was that first job? I was actually no, you know that wasn't my first job. Yeah, because you started. That was working. my second. That was my second job. Um, my first job was I worked as like a maintenance worker at my high school. Mm-hmm. Um, that was when I was fifteen. And that was yeah, because that was after my. For sophomore year of high school. Then the, after my junior year of high school, I worked at... Okay, wait. So <laughs> you... <laughs> so, okay, we know what you're doing now. Yeah. So you first started working in high school. Yes. At 15. Mm-hmm. Doing, I guess, like painting. Yeah, I used to like paint to classrooms. Um, I mean, we goofed off a lot too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was me and actually Sap, who yeah. was on the podcast earlier. Um I mean, I'm trying to remember all the stuff that we did. We just, like, we would set up classrooms for the new teachers, move desks, move cabinets, mm-hmm. um, things like that, paint. Whatever the school needed. Yeah, basically. Year. Cheap labor for the school. That's what we were. I um, didn't start working. I didn't work in high school. Yeah. I didn't start working until, like, college. Like, your last year of college, pretty mm-hmm. much. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> until I was, like, an adult, like. My parents didn't, I don't know. Like, I've been paying never, taxes since I was 15 years old. <laughs> like, it was never something that they wanted me to do. And I mean, I wanted to. I always like pretended to be a waitress and stuff wow. when I was little. That's sad. I ain't gonna like, lie to you. That's sad. <laughs> like, I mean, my brother and sister are seven to eight years older than me. Mm-hmm. So basically, they would boss me around, but I would make a game out of it. 
Nah. Like, oh, go get me some water, and then I'd like write nah. it down. Like, okay, that's, that's you know, two dollars. Nah. I've whatever. been on, I've been on people's <laughs> payroll since I was fifteen. Yeah. So. Okay, I, so you've been doing that. Mm-hmm. What other jobs did you have before college? Before college, okay. So my first job was working as a maintenance worker. My second one, I worked at a construction company. And, like, I used to just work in their, like, yard. In the summertime. In the summer. i do whatever they asked me to do. Um, that's actually, like, where I learned how to drive. Uh, or started to learn how to drive. Because one day someone came outside. I was like, hey, move that truck. <laughs> and I was just like. Okay. They don't know I'm, like, 15. <laughs> I don't know how to drive. So then, like, I hopped in and the lady, another person came out. I was like, do you even have a license? And I was like, nah. And then that ended up making her, like. She showed me how to use a forklift. If you don't know what it is, look it up. Um, so, I'm pretty so, sure most people know what a forklift is. Okay. Well, so she put me on a forklift, and she, like, kind of gave me the basics of how to drive on a forklift. And then I got, like, forklift certified. I was, like, 16, 15, 16 years old. Oh, Whatever. so women can drive forklifts. Wow. I no, never I'm just, questioned I'm just it. saying, like, you know Never what I'm questioned saying? that. Anyway, trying to give people For those trouble. people... <laughs> So then, I guess my next job was the the summer after that. I worked at a t shirt printing shop. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I want, and I worked there during the summer. So summertime is like prime uh, family reunion time. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many family reunion shirts are pressed up that year. I know a lot of people got like cricket designs on their uh, family reunion oh, shirt. I was a rookie man. Though, I'm sure. So and so I did. The family reunions and school, back to school, I would stitch up uh like the Little the logos and yeah. emblems on people's shirts. That I mean it was a rough job. Only because like our boss literally used to pay us out of his pocket. Like we didn't get checks. Like he'll just pull out cash out of his pocket and pay us. Like it'll be a you week. Sure like, you want to put this out there? Yeah, I don't care. We get <laughs> we got paid like on a Tuesday. Yeah. Like he just oh you work how many hours a day? Boom, and he just paid me right out of his pocket. So, yeah, I definitely uh, got out of that as soon as I could. And then when I got to school. um, So what did you study in school? In school, I studied business. I was a marketing major. I came in just as like a business administration major because I didn't know anything else. Mm -hmm. I was like, let me figure it out. I ended up taking a a basic marketing class and I loved it and I stuck with it. And I thought I was pretty good. But anyway. um, (laughs) Now, were were your parents okay with you studying business? (laughs) <laughs> so yeah my parents were okay with it mm-hmm. they just you know like anybody the first question I asked like what kind of job can you get yeah I was just like I don't know I was like I just got here um so that was like always the question like oh what kind of job are you gonna get what kind of job are you gonna get and then like I never really knew I had no idea mm-hmm. um I just kind of went to school I went to class I did my work that was it um so you asked me about jobs. Are we still doing jobs? I mean, I just wanted to know, like, what what do you? I guess to get to the current job that you have, you went to school and you study what you did. I yeah, guess, like I wasted we're time. Join in and say I, what I, do. I don't know. <laughs> Let, let's go back because <laughs> go I guess because I had so many jobs. Yeah, like just to sum it up, I worked at um, my first job was I was a uh, I used to sign people up for freshmen up for meal plans. Then when in they college. come in for orientation, mm-hmm. I would I work with a, a group of people and we sign them up for for meal plans, and then that led to me getting a job as like there was like a like a school quickie mart type deal. <laughs> I worked in That's a quickie what I mart. Used to call it. Yeah, so I worked in a school quickie mart or whatever, and then I had like side jobs where like I would uh, be a college ambassador for certain companies um, or artists. Well, yeah, that was another job. Oh, okay. The but I didn't really get paid for that. I just did that to meet people. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I basically, I mean, I had a lot of odd jobs, and then my first job out of college was basically what I'm doing now. Okay. Um, did you and, have any internship? Like, do you need to intern before you do that? Or so one thing that I regret about college was my lack of internships. Um. I think if I would have done internships during my time at school, I would have never been, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I think I would have ended up getting a job in marketing Hmm. or some other field of business. 
Um, but because I was just so focused on school and yeah. just whatever goes around that, I didn't do that. And that's why I stress on my brother and any young person, like when I want any of my players, whatever, when they're in school, like, hey, go do internships, get involved. Because I learned, unfortunately, at the end of college, it's not about the grades you make, but the hands you shake sometimes. Yeah. So I kind of, that's one of the, my regrets about, you know, not taking that part of school seriously yeah. when people would tell me, oh, you should go get an internship. I'm like, why? Like, yeah, and I'm killing paid. it in school. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But yeah. So okay, I guess I'll chime in and think before you start to go down the line of like all the jobs you've had. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, that's it. I'm, day, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. To present day. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, like I said, I didn't start working in high school. I started working like my senior year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, senior year of college. <clears throat> um, and I studied fashion design. And as most Haitian kids out there know, my parents were probably not about that life. They were not. <laughs> well, at least my dad wasn't. My mom, she stayed home with me growing up. So it was just kind of like, whatever you want to do, do that. She's like the free thinker <laughs> in that relationship. <laughs> we don't use that term. What? Free thinker. What do you mean? That's Kanye's term. We don't use that. No. No, she... she whatever <laughs> um, my dad is more like strict like this is what you go to college for mm-hmm. and this is going to guarantee you a job and a good salary da, 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 da. but at the same time he's an entrepreneur so i'm kind of weird like i feel weird that he even thought that way but i, I mean i kind of get it because your dad is or was whatever i don't know what he calls himself anymore an accountant <laughs> yeah and accounting is so strict. Yeah. It's such so regimented. Like he, that's how he looks at life. Probably like mm-hmm. you go to school, you graduate, you do what you study. Like because right. that's kind of what his path was. He eventually moved out on, on to do his own thing, but mm-hmm. that's kind of like how he was. So I, I can get you know yeah. why his mind was like that. And also like just different countries, different mindsets, yeah. all that stuff. Um, but I mean, yeah, because I know a lot of kids. Um, that may want to do something and then their parents are not on board and then they completely just hate their jobs for the rest of their life. I didn't want to do that. Um, So I still did what I wanted to do. Yeah. (laughs) And it is what it is. I mean, they still helped me through it and love me. And they, I, it just gave me more motivation to like make sure I prove to them that I can Mm -hmm. actually live doing what I'm doing. Um, But in college, like I said, I study fashion design and I, um, at first I took an internship with a modeling agency. Yeah. I don't even know why, but it just sounded cool at the time. Um, and did you get paid for that? one? No, Yeah. not in the beginning. I didn't get paid until like a year after. So I, I did that for like two years um, and basically, I was just like an administrative assistant type thing. I would scan in headshots. I would do email blasts for like different commercials in Tampa. Sometimes I would go to the shoots because they just needed people. And I got paid a couple of times doing jobs. Yeah. But not like doing my for job. For the actual internship. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was nice because I met, um, I guess, like the first person in the industry that actually did something for me yeah um kira she was like the new faces director and like back in her day she used to model in new york and so she knew a lot of designers um so she like hooked me up with just different people to send out like my portfolio and stuff for internships um which leads me to internships (laughs) um i i didn't do any design internships in tampa Because that's where where we both went to school. Because that's not really like the city for that. But once I got out of Tampa, I moved to New York for a year. And I did an internship, a a production internship with Kushnia Docs. And most of my internships were like runway designers. Um, So you're not going to, you know, I didn't work with Target or anything like that. I worked with like New York brands. Um, basically I was just like running around the city, finding threads, zippers, fabric, 
whatever I needed. Um, yeah, you're a runner. Up. Yeah, basically. I, I only went on like two coffee runs. Yeah. In the whole in that whole year. But I had like five different internships. Um and yeah. I could not find a job in New York that I actually liked to save my life. The first job I got was at a furniture like upholstery place. Upholstery place. Yeah. They made like custom furniture for like super rich um yeah. celebrities and stuff, but I was like the fabric manager, but I had, I knew nothing about furniture. Like, <laughs> what am I doing here? So from there, I applied everywhere. I applied like in California because I was just like, I need a job. Like, I don't care where I am. Um, and I happened to get a job in Fort Lauderdale. So I ended up moving back home. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a technical design position, which is what I do currently. So, should I even describe what that is? No. <laughs> no, don't, because one is boring. It's not boring. Yes, it is. When people ask me, like, oh, what does your wife do? <laughs> like, that's the toughest question, because I'm like, I can try to tell you, but I don't even know if I know like that. I'll do, okay, a quick synopsis. So, there's like a a, a design... How do I put this? What I tell people when they ask me, what do you do? I said, oh... She's almost in like quality control. Eh, like, eh. No. I like, she makes sure a small is a small, <laughs> a medium is a medium, and a large is a large before it comes out. That's there's, the best okay, way I can describe it. There's like it. a system in how, like, take the shirt that you're wearing. Stop. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the okay. shirt that you're wearing, whoever's listening to this, there's a process that that shirt went through. Design started it, they decided to sketch it up and all that stuff, put a collar on it and all that stuff, right? Then from design, which is like the creative design, it goes to me, the technical design, technical designer. And from there, I spec it out. I make sure like the length is correct. You want the right buttons on there. The buttonholes have to be a right, you know, the correct width. The hem has to be right. And like if they design something that doesn't make sense, I'm like, there's no way you can put a sleeve here. Like it, it doesn't add up. So I'm kind of like, the streamliner from the idea to the actual garment, gotcha. if that makes sense. So I work with patterns, I sketch things, all that stuff. Now, <laughs> now that that's out the way, what was your starting salary? <laughs> um, my starting salary as what? a production. No, you weren't a production manager no, at the time. No, I was, and especially for my people who watch the office. So I started off as a. <laughs> Assistant project manager, but some people would say an assistant to, to the project assistant. manager. Yeah. So yeah, basically, I mean, I was like his runner. Like, mm-hmm. it was a department. It was literally just the two of us, I guess. That was low key like your paid internship. Yeah, just that's literally what it was. I got like, I want to say I started at fourteen dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what is that yearly? I don't know. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a lot. Yeah, yeah. I was definitely... I mean, I wasn't disappointed, but I guess what led me to that, too, like, I didn't even get to that part. Like, when I moved home, I applied for... I want to say applied to, like, over 100 jobs. I went to a bunch of interviews. Um, Some scammed ones. Yeah, I definitely got scammed once. Wow. That's a story for another day. <laughs> um, And nothing. Like, there was somewhere, like, I made it to the final whatever... And then I really thought I got it. I thought I killed my interview. I was like, oh, sorry to inform you. But so then after like, I think it was about a year, um, my dad calls me and he's like, hey, go to such and such address and tell him you're here to fill out an application. Um, I didn't know what the job was. I didn't know what position I was applying for. (laughs) And he just said, tell them that, you know, I sent you. I get there. I fill out the paperwork, and as I'm handing it in, like, she tells me, the lady at the front desk tells me to wait a second, and I guess they hand it to the owner at the time, and I get hired on the spot. I still don't know what I'm doing, (laughs) what this place is, really. Like, I just got a job, and I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, that's kind of how I got thrown into this, and I always grew up saying, hey, I'm never going to do what my dad does. 
you know. But you don't, though. Kind of. I didn't want to be involved in the industry at all. Yeah. Like, my dad is more of, like, a technician. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm more administrative and, and like, management. But I still, I never wanted to do this. But um, at the time, I was like, I couldn't be picky. I needed a job. Yeah. Um, I had been out of college for a year. And then it got to the point where it's like, the only other thing my parents would have accepted was either work there or go back to school. And I wasn't trying to go back to school. Yeah. So I started working there. Um, they started me at $14 an hour. I was just like a runner. Not runner. Yeah, I guess I was a runner pretty much. Um, I would just do little things like at first, I wanted my first day at work. I definitely fell asleep. Like there was nothing for me to do. They only had like one project. Mm -hmm. Um, but as the department grew, like I kind of started to take more responsibility. So like there was one day my boss was doing something and he had like, I saw his like to do list. Mm -hmm. And then like, I kind of just on my own, like, okay, I'm going to do one of the items on his to do list. And once I did that, he was like, kind of like shocked, like, oh, like you can do more. So I kind of, he kind of liked the fact that I took initiative and whatnot. And mm-hmm. they just started giving me more responsibility. And then when I first started there, they told me, oh, you know, after three months, we're going to give you a review and, you know, we'll decide like, you know, as far as financially where you are. So I kind of, I had, I took my initiative probably around like the two month mark, you know, mm-hmm. kind of was like, you know, if I'm going to, I want to at least give them something to talk about when we do my review. So then I kind of noticed, like, okay, after three months, no review. Four months, no review. Six months, no review. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, what's up? And then there was someone who got hired after me, different department. Three months, he got a review, and uh, he got a raise. Mm-hmm. And I was I was salty. I was like, okay. <laughs> so then whatever. I ended up going a whole year with no review. And then finally, like... My boss came and he was like, you know, I just want you. I didn't forget about you. Yeah, they had a game review, and they gave me like the large raise of like two dollars or something like that. <laughs> but I didn't let it stop me, I guess. And I just kept like taking responsibility, taking responsibility mm-hmm. to the point where like I finally became like a real assistant right. project manager, and from there like just took off. Took off. Yeah, yeah from there it took off. Um, and then I ended up. Being there for five years, running the department at the end. I was running the department for like at least a year. And that led me to my new position at my new job where I have less responsibility, but because of my experience, I get paid more. Right. Um, and hopefully it takes off from there. But so yeah. what is like the range of salary? Not that you would give off what you make, but like yeah, be careful, for yeah. people who are one, like curious, like maybe they, they want to do that. What's the range um, of what you would make in this position? <laughs> um, uh, you put me on a spot. Um, <laughs> because it I don't, don't have to be some short range. I mean, okay, because different be, well, jobs and okay, different so, areas pay. So right now, hmm. at least in the Miami market. Okay, okay, I do it like this. So where I am now, like I said, I have less responsibility, right? Um, I'm an assistant project manager right now at where I'm at now. The project managers where I work, the salaries range for the project managers. So I give you something to look forward to, and I don't need to tell you how much I make. <laughs> the lowest I've seen is 85K, and the highest goes around to like 115 Mm-hmm. That's like the range. Okay. So like a starting project manager would make around 85k. Okay. Um but yeah, and then depending on, you know, the perks range from vehicle allowances, like they'll pay you, you know, 500, 600 dollars a month for your car. Yeah, like there are um, other incentives. Yeah. And uh, you know, cell phone, they'll pay your cell phone bill, different things like that. Um it's a market that I think is very open. Like there's not a lot of people who do what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're always looking to train and, and bring people in. But, um, it's, it's just a really small, like industry. Yeah. Um, so the people who work there either just rotate from different companies or you get, you get by on your reputation after a while. Like, yeah. cause there's nobody really to compete against. Um, gotcha. but yeah. 
That was awkward. Why um, was that awkward? I don't like talking about money like that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, what about you? Um, what my position? Like how? Well, like where you started, I guess, fiscally, uh, like monetarily. I mean. Yeah. And then for you. Okay. Well, I mean, I I said that I had like a ton of internships. Like, yeah. Probably for longer than I should have interned. So I'll just. I think because of that experience. Um, and I mean, obviously I work on the side and stuff, but once I got my first job, I was like, well, this is nothing, but I wasn't making nothing before. Yeah. Um, and you would think, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to name drop a little bit mm-hmm. just so you know, like the, the brands that I was with make money. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't pay their interest. Um, and I think there's like this new law now in New York, but, um, like Tommy Hilfiger and I know. We, we don't, have our little canceled. issues with him. Yeah, go ahead. But <laughs> Peter Song, Jen Cow, and maybe these names don't yeah, mean, mean nothing to, to me. You sound like Kanye right I now. I sound like Kanye. That's fine. Um, and I have my little tips with Kanye because he didn't want to intern. But whatever. Kushnia Dogs, um, Cynthia Rowley. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people. If you watch their shows and if you go to different websites, you know what they're charging for items. But anyway, my first position, um, should I say the New York job, like the furniture one? No. So I would start with... The Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Okay. So that was at one of like a beachwear type company. Mm -hmm. And my starting position, my starting salary was $29,000. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. (laughs) I mean, at the time... It felt like something when we were doing it. It was something because I didn't live on my own. Like I moved back in with my parents for a little while um, until we got married. So I really wasn't paying rent. I was paying like my car. I mean, not my car, my um, gas, my phone, like that kind of thing. So really I stretched my money and I saved a lot during that time. I feel like that's kind of what I started. I think when I did the 14, it's like 29K. It's like almost pretty much the same thing. Yeah. So twenty nine thousand, and then um, since then, and that was an assistant technical position, assistant technical designer position. Um, from there, I worked at Zumba. So Zumba has a clothing line. If you guys don't know, um, but I was there for three years, and I was there from like a production assistant to associate technical designer i want to say um and at the the last like at the latter part of my time there i was pretty much like the only person in the department until like one of my like favorite people joined the team and we just we just went with it after that i took a design job um, an associate designer job at boston proper and it was kind of, it was just really short. I did not like designing. Um, and I will tell you, even though it was more than I was making at Zumba, designers don't make money. So mm. that's, like, a lot of people would be like, why did you go to fashion design school? And now you're, like, a technical designer. Like, designers don't get paid unless you have your own business, yeah. you know? Um, and now I'm a, I'm a technical designer. I'm a, the only technical designer where I am. Um and I've been there for two years. So in total, I've been doing this for like eight years. Yeah, close to that. Yeah, pretty much. More like 11. Or 11? I mean nine. More like nine. Really? I think so. Maybe. Wait, you said eight? Yeah, eight. No, my bad. I meant seven. Sorry. Eight. Because when did you start working for a lot of it? I was like two and eight. Two, oh, you're, 11. you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, okay. industry-wise. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so like seven to eight years. Do you, do you think your career is turning out the way you expected it to? Um, hmm. yeah. Uh, I I don't know if I had any expectations. Yeah. That's probably why. But I mean, okay. So I guess to compare it to what I'm thinking, oh, I didn't like say what the salary is. We don't have to. Um, <laughs> okay. I don't like talking about money. Anyway, so as far as like when I first first like my first day working at my first company or whatever, I knew that I was not always going to be an assistant to the project manager. Yeah. So I had an expectation, I guess, as to where 
like my career would go from there. And then, you know, as I progressed, I eventually like would make new goals. Um, and, you know, I feel like for the most part, I consistently I've hit some of those goals, um, both like position wise and financially. So do you feel like you've progressed oh, yeah. the way you wanted to? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, financially for sure. Um, even like just the things I do now, it's almost second nature. Like I don't, it's like, oh, okay, well, yeah. Like, I know the industry standards. And, of course, there are things that, you know, with technology, things always are evolving. Um, but, yeah, I, I definitely think I'm growing in the area that I'm in career-wise. Um, and it's just, I don't know. I didn't have any expectations, but I knew that, like, there was a certain life that I wanted with my career. Mm-hmm. Like, I couldn't be a doctor, you know, because I want flexibility to do things that I actually enjoy outside yeah. of you know, whatever I do. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it's it's good. I definitely think it's cutthroat. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're not lying when they talk about... I mean, obviously, like, every industry has their own thing, but fashion is is really cutthroat. Yeah. Um, is, is, is who you know and there's a lot of people who you do know that don't really care for you so you it's not a lot of people you can trust <laughs> like your job is not always um, stable I guess yeah um, there's a lot of it's just always changing so there's a lot of movement um, you sometimes like the fact that I've found so many positions here in South Florida is unheard of. Like, yeah. people are always like, how are you finding all these jobs? <laughs> There's no jobs here. I'm like, oh, no. I just, I just always do. Yeah. But you have to be very fluid. Like, I know people who have four kids, and they'll just go where the money is. Like, wherever the job is, if they have to go to Atlanta, they'll go with all their kids. Or they'll go to Nike with all their kids. Or yeah. Under Armour with all their, like, it's, you just move with, you know, the yeah. position. Move with the money, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, so where do you see like your career going from here? I feel like I don't have the way I thought about this in college is so different than how I think now. Mm-hmm. Like, I know there's so many things that I can do with the skills that I have now. So even if it's not technical design, I know that I can design and I know that I know the whole process. So me starting my own business is a possibility, you yeah. know? Um, or even like setting up an alteration shop. Like my mom would just, all of it, like, I don't know, my mom is, is weird. So she'll say like, oh, let's open up a, um, what is it called? Food truck. No. Oh. <laughs> a laundromat. Oh, yeah, and you yeah, can yeah. do like alterations in the laundromat. And yeah. I'm like, oh, where's this coming from? Like, but it is a possibility. Like, yeah. if you want to not work for people, it's an option because I have the skill. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, by the time I'm tired of this, I know that I know other things. Mm-hmm. So I may not always be in the fashion industry, but as of right now, I'm good with being in the fashion industry. Yeah. What about you? Um, for me, I guess I don't. I don't see myself moving to like owning my own company because I mean, a few people are like my dad owns a That's company a lot, in the industry, right? I've seen how hard it is to maneuver in the industry. I can't see myself putting myself in that spot, yeah. but I definitely could see myself. There's. <laughs> Plenty of room for growth, especially what I know about what a, how the industry's working. And your workers like, can lose their fingers. Like, there's a lot of... Yeah, but I'm, I'm just talking about just being an owner <laughs> is just not easy in that type of industry. Um, like, you see what happened with the bridge collapse the yeah. other day. Like, granted, that wasn't my same line of work, but things like that can happen. Mm-hmm. And I just don't want to be in a position of responsibility in one of those things. Yeah. So I don't mind being a high level employee though for someone who's willing to take their responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so yeah, like I have my eye like fixed on a certain position. Um, I won't claim it now because somebody else is there, but uh, oh. just <laughs> but just the idea, like I know, I think I can see myself to, getting to, to that point. Jobs on here. I mean, you know, but I could just see myself getting to that point, um, and that's what I'm moving towards. So yeah, uh, I definitely see a lot of room for growth, and uh, yeah. Do you think it's hard managing or balancing your career with like? us our married life and yes all of the other things we have going on yes only because the way my job works it doesn't just stop when i come home mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. so i remember there was just a point in time where like i felt like you were super fed up with me and my job because i, I if i remember we were like like we'll go try to go on vacation at the time like we were going on a cruise and I was oh, literally man. on the phone with my job, like, until I put a foot on the boat. Like, yeah. they... they but were, honestly, like, anybody who's married to somebody or with someone who's with... I mean, who has, like, a, you know, hectic type of job situation, go on cruises. Because at some point, you lose service. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's okay. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think... That made it difficult because it was like trying to get it to the point where, okay, you have to understand, I have to answer some of these calls. I can't ignore these people um, because that's just the thing. Like if a street light goes out in the middle of the night because of a thunderstorm. That's what you're saying. What? I say, you know, the DJ MV checks though. Yeah, exactly. I mean, (laughs) if you don't have a problem with them direct deposits, you can't have a problem with these (laughs) phone calls right now. But it's like they'll call me in the middle of the night. They don't care. They'll mm-hmm. call me in the middle of church. Um, yeah, they will. Like, I get all types of phone calls because this is just a certain level of responsibility. Um, but, and then it's like, there's a point where, like, to get where I need or want to be, like, I might have to put in extra hours. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just trying to balance, like, no one is worth it. No one is not worth it. Uh, you know, it's time to go home. Um, and that's one thing I say about today now, like even when we were on our little getaway and what you call it was calling some guy was calling you. I was like, pick up. And you didn't want to. I was like, yeah, no, that was different. But yeah, (laughs) now Um. I tell you to pick up the phone because you you want them direct deposits to get a little bigger. Uh But no, but I'll say with my new boss and company, uh, he's a lot more like he's very open to like family oriented things like. He tries to make sure we don't work on weekends and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, if I tell him, you know, I need to do something for my family, he's, like, real real open to it and whatnot. Um, so I think that helps having a boss who's uh, understanding in that way. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I've definitely gotten better, I guess, mm-hmm. at dealing with it and, and balancing. But, um, yeah, it's not easy. It's that That's still a lot of work. Um, what about you? Um, I think <laughs> it's a little easier for me because I have to be in the office in order to do what I do. Yeah. Um, at least for whatever company I'm working for. So, like, unless I'm working on, like, some crazy project that really doesn't happen a lot, like a deficit analysis project I was working on years ago. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Then yeah, like I would have to bring homework, but that that doesn't happen often. So for me, it's a little easier. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, there have been other jobs like in New York, where you're just in the office until one a.m. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's Fashion Week and things gotta get done. So, yeah. um, but like that's not that's like not the market here, um, which I appreciate. So I guess my next question will be, okay, to someone, um, I guess, younger than you, a young professional, would do you have any, like, advice for managing, you know, just the college process to being a, a you know, entry-level employee? Um, in my industry. Right? In general, yeah, I guess. Oh, or even well, in the industry, it doesn't matter. I would say... You, I mean, for what I do, you definitely have to go to school. Mm-hmm. Um, at least for two years, get that associate's degree. But 
yeah, like the fashion school is a little taste of what you're going to get when you start working. Like the classes are four hours long. You're going to have projects that require you to go to different fabric stores and source different things and just figure out tons of things in such a short amount of time. Um, like we used to always complain that like our semesters were so so much shorter than yours, like a traditional school, but that's just, that's how it is. Like in real life, like your deadlines are non-existent, yeah. <laughs> like they're due last week. Um, so just pay attention, I guess, in school, like actually take advantage of the time you're there, build connections and, um, build connections wherever you go, Yeah, you know, whatever job you take. And, you know, speak up. If you don't feel like you're getting paid what you're supposed to, speak up. <laughs> yeah, I struggle with that. I'm yeah, I've that. had to do that before. I'm like, I know. Like, I won't know what people are getting paid, but I know what people are getting paid. I'm like, nah, give it to me. Like, <laughs> I have a story about that, but I'll save it. <laughs> Share. No, I won't. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's too it's fresh. off the air. Yeah, it's too fresh. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, what about you? What would be your advice um i kind of said it earlier i guess for at least college level definitely if you know what you're interested in intern somewhere um get that experience even if it's for free Mm -hmm. go do it um i I can't there's no way that it will be like a disservice to you like it can only help you to get that experience in your area and just get a job on the side yeah you know um and for like an entry level person, like one of my main um one of my main advice that I always give people is man, just don't be don't settle, I guess. Don't be happy in your entry level position. Um I like I tell my kids all the time, if you're gonna work somewhere, be the manager. Like if you if you're gonna work at McDonalds over the summer, like get to the point where they feel like they need you. Mm. Um you know, make yourself important wherever wherever you are, in whatever position you are. You know, create your value, because um, I, I see it going a long way. And definitely, like, be nice to people on your way up and down yeah. the, the the ladder, because yeah. um, it, it all comes around full circle. You'll see a lot of these people again, if you, especially if you're working in a specific industry. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not as big as you think. Yeah, you'll see a lot of these people everybody. again. So definitely treat everyone with a certain level of respect. Um, but yeah, I, I think those are my my main things. And, oh, I have uh, a fun question. What would you choose to do if you weren't doing what what you're doing now? And like, what do you think you would retire doing? Oh, if you, I, there's a lot of things you're doing. On yeah, the side, so. if I wasn't um in construction, I would definitely be like a full time coach. Hmm. Um, it's you know I, I've dabbled and dabbled in it, but. Uh, it's one of those things that I guess if I knew how much of a passion it would be for me now, I would have worked at it from college. At like, the high school level? No, like or at the college level. level. Oh. Like I would have tried to be like, you know, in a, a manager for like a, a my college team or whatever, just just to get my foot in the door um, and try to, to be involved some way. Um, but I, I think, yeah, if that's if I knew back then, yeah, I definitely. And even now. Um, if the right thing came up, I would definitely like coach full time. And that's probably what I'll retire doing. Cause I mean, it doesn't take all day to do. It's something that just keeps, you know, semi active and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely like coach. If I wasn't doing what I'm doing now, I'd definitely coach. Gotcha. What about you? Um, well, before I wanted to be a designer or in fashion, I wanted to be a gynecologist. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that now, but I would want to be a midwife. Yeah. Like, you know that. Cause I do. I just watch interesting We're, videos. It's like weird videos. Yeah. I will watch, like, animals give birth. Give birth. Just because, like, it's it's fascinating to me. That's like a psychopath, killer type behavior, but okay. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No. But, yeah, like, I would either want to be a midwife or, um, I don't know if I would actually want to be a therapist. Um, just because I feel like it's a heavy yeah. burden. Like, I know you're not supposed to take on other people's burdens. But you would. But you will. Like, it's inevitable. Yeah. Um, but I love talking to people and seeing how they think and 
being emotional with people and crying with people. So that would be interesting. Um, and I could retire a florist. Like, I know that's weird, but like I took a floral class and it was really nice. Like, <laughs> it was just a bunch of old ladies and myself. And mm-hmm. yeah, like, I just feel like it's so cute. Like, you can do a lot with, with flowers. Well, <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. But anyway, okay. So I guess I think that's it. Um, yeah, jump into the conversation. Yeah, I'm Let interested to, to hear what other people do, mm-hmm. how they got into it. You know, I love, like, talking to people and, and asking them about what they're passionate about and, like, yeah. if their job or whatever. So, um, yeah, I'd like to hear from you guys and... and and what do you do and, and maybe how you fell into it and where you see yourself going from there. Yes. So. Um, beep, beep. Yeah. Who got the keys to the Jeep? I'm driving to the beach. Top down, loud sound, see my piece. Give them pounds now, look, who it be? It be me, 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 and Timothy. All right. So uh, before we start, um, you guys can email us uh, at michellematters at gmail.com if you have any questions. Uh, we're always looking for good questions for our listener question uh, segment. Um, the first question this week is, I don't know who this is from, but uh, how do you go about staying modest in your appearance as a Christian? I'm struggling because what's appropriate to some people may not be appropriate to others. I'm going to go ahead and take a leap and say this is a woman, so I'm going to toss this to Jackie. (laughs) Yes. Uh, It was definitely directed towards me, but I feel like this whole modest thing is always directed towards women, so I'm going to ask your opinion, too, (sighs) Um, (laughs) especially in the church. But I think, for me, like, I don't... (laughs) Why are you making that face? Because... It's true. Okay. But, okay, I know we, we have a lot more going on. So I get it, but like it's just so annoying. <laughs> Do you, have you ever? Okay, this is not like I'm not trying to flip this or whatever, but have you ever seen a guy dress unmodestly at church? And what would um, that even look like? See, that's the thing because she even said like some people think other things. Okay, are but to you, to you, to me, I don't think it's necessarily what they have worn, but like how they carry themselves that's not modest yes like there's just like like okay say i'm standing in front of you right Mm -hmm. and like we're by the stairs Mm -hmm. like our church has two stairs i feel like i know where you're going with this okay Go go ahead like if one if i'm talking to you i'm just like oh you know how was your week blah 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 and all of a sudden you like lift your leg up and put it on the stair yeah, and like i knew uh, like why are you doing that or like just certain ways that people will hug you or maybe they'll hug you for too long okay or but like, this is beyond modesty at they, this point yeah but that's a part of it i know but i'm talking mm, but she's saying and but she's saying in modest in your appearance yeah 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 but i'm i'm going to ask you to but um for me i don't necessarily go about like getting dressed and thinking modesty modesty mod- like you ask you ask me sometimes yeah when but you get like, dressed i don't that's not what i go for in my closet like i won't be like oh what's like a modest shirt that i have today mm-hmm. that i can wear <laughs> like no i just wear what's nice um if i feel like in my little my spirit that like okay this is a little too much t- even for me mm-hmm. you know Thankfully, I live with somebody. So if you have a roommate or like friends or whatever that you could shoot a text, like, what do you think about this outfit? For me, I ask you, and most of the time you don't say anything. It's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like you'll be like, you feel like that's short. Okay. Like yeah. Change it then, but it looks fine. Um, but yeah, I I wouldn't get caught up on what's appropriate to others or what's appropriate to some people is not whatever like i've been in crowds that have been super super strict about modesty and then some that are just like crop tops and shorts all day like yeah. you know um i remember i was around this one girl we were in a small group together and i wore i love lipstick like that's just my thing i feel like i have the lips for it so i wear it right you do but carry on <laughs> So I wore like this bright, like purplish, pinkish tone to the small group, but I had just come from work and I work in the fashion industry. 
um, where people dress up. So I went to the small group and she was like, who are you trying to look cute for? Um, something, some underhanded comment that I was just like, okay. Like, and she was that type that, you know, the natural hair, like, mm-hmm. and I have natural hair, so I'm not coming for the natural hair people, but the natural hair, no makeup, t-shirt and jeans yeah. and your chucks type of girl like mm. so maybe that's not for you but i don't feel like i'm sinning for wearing lipstick you know what i'm saying yeah so i wouldn't get too hung up on that stuff mm-hmm. like because that could become legalistic yeah you know what's too revealing like in in <laughs> in real life you know what's too revealing like if you if you out here with a little kim set you probably you know what i'm saying so. This is probably a little too revealing. It's probably where you are in your walk too, like because this is kind of like a question of that I would expect from someone that's kind of like a newish believer, mm. where like this is like a trivial matter. It Whereas like with other believers, it's just kind of like <clears throat> you know other topics. I don't know. It's not really about modesty, but anyway, I I um, can understand the struggle. Depending on who your circle is, but I I don't get hung up on if it's appropriate to other people. I get I I try to ask in the sense like, is this you know is it pleasing? At the end of the day, to God, is it ple- whatever you're wearing is it pleasing? But also like, do you look cute? Because you still want to look cute. Like <laughs> I don't know, you're making faces because. So I I guess I more understand the question as a man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because be- we're supposed to be dressing for you guys, right? <laughs> That's what they say. No, okay. <laughs> so this this whole topic, the topic of dressing modestly, typically comes up for it, it, it's it's a touchy subject because it, it talks about two people. One, it talks about the person dressing, and also the person who's looking. Mm. So, if someone says that something is not modest sometimes, it may be because it affects them in a way that maybe doesn't affect everyone else. Or because they felt a certain way, then it's not modest because it affected them. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I see a woman who's dressed and her chest is more exposed then maybe I would say, oh my gosh, she needs to dress more modestly. Or you could look at it the other way. Maybe you need to I could look. be a more mature Christian. Yeah. And, you know, the sight of, you know, cleavage shouldn't throw my whole life off. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I the the dressing modestly, I think, is a is a two way street. Yeah. Um I do think that some women I'm trying to, (laughs) I want to be, I want to make sure I say this right. (laughs) I think if the thought is there, then that's good. So if you're thinking about it. Yeah, you're in the right direction. As long as you're thinking about it and you put thought into what your modesty is, then I feel like that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. But I don't think... I'm trying to think how to say this. You I, are struggling, right? Yeah, because <laughs> because now that you got to be careful with the way you say things, right? Like, I don't want to mm-hmm. sound like, you know, women, you need to do this. Right. And you need to do that. Yeah. Like, as a man, telling the woman how she needs to dress. But I think as long as the her headspace is in a place where she's thinking about modesty, and some women can't help the way they're built. Like, exactly. they're built the way they're built. So... It's not, you can't hide your yeah. butt Like, sometimes. you could have a whole, like, okay, like a V-neck shirt on me may not look like a V-neck shirt on somebody, somebody else. else. Exactly. Like, and you're going to get more cleavage with somebody else. Exactly. And it is what it is. Like, yes. they're not being, like, unmodest. They're just exactly wearing a t-shirt. But, you know, there are certain, like, outfits that are made to expose more. They're mm-hmm. not, like, you know what I'm saying? Like... If there's a certain dress that has a certain slit or like it's cut a certain way or. Yeah. Well, because, OK, my sister. Why am I answering this? <laughs> no, I, I wanted your point. Yeah, of no, my I know. My sister even asked both of us. Once, she did. Like, if I wanted to wear a certain dress like on a date night. Mm-hmm. 
and it was, you know, a little scandalous or whatever because it's date night, would you feel some type of way? Um, and like, is that still being modest? And we told her, like, I don't really care. Yeah, he don't care. That, like, that, that's just my personality. Yeah. Like, I don't care for the most part. Because the issue I guess some people have with it is, oh my God, if your wife dresses a certain way, she's going to attract a certain type of attention. Yeah. And in my mind, like, okay. Like, right. I don't, the problem isn't more so like, the only time I think I ever, ever becomes an issue to me is if I'm not around maybe. But mm-hmm. even then it's like, it's it, we're that's more thing about the outside world and what how they view my wife. Like if my wife looks good the way she looks, and you as an outsider appreciate it, then I feel complimented as well. <laughs> so, like, it just lets me know that people like what I got. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't bother me in that way. And like, I guess the only other thing would be maybe people feel like you know, is you know how they just tell women like, oh, you dress a certain way, so. You invited a certain type of, it, right. of of attention or energy in that yeah. direction. I mean, I, I don't. That doesn't phase me in that way. Yeah, I feel like as long as you put thought into what you're doing, and you left, you know, knowing that I wore this dress because I like the dress and I like the way I look in the dress or something, and it's not, you know, I left this because oh, they are gonna like this one, mm-hmm. right? right. You didn't leave there with the with the mindset of the attention or the the intent of seeking attention today. Like you didn't wear it for like a publicity thing. Mm-hmm. You did it because that's what you felt nice in that day, and you believe it's a dress in your opinion is modest. And you know, I mean, because modesty is so subjective. Yeah, you like, don't have to wear a muumuu every day. Yeah, right? you know what I'm saying. Like as long as you have the right headspace when you're doing what you're doing, I think it's acceptable. Now, in the in to me, where it, I think the real progress needs to be made is with men, for the most part, and sometimes other women, which is weird to me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because I feel like women judge women more than men judge women sometimes. Yeah. True. So I feel like if men can learn to maybe mature right. and not be affected by every little thing, women then do. progress can be made. Yes. So yeah. All right. Hopefully we. <laughs> We didn't really give a direct question, but I mean, girl, answer. do you? If pray about it, yes. If you feel good, wear it. That's and it. Look cute. All right. Next question: Is there a rule or standard as to who should be the breadwinner in a marriage? There. <laughs> this is coming from someone who, um, you know, we we've talked about like the double standard of like a woman staying at home versus a man staying at home while the other person works. Um, and perhaps, you know, like my friends got things going on with their life. So one part two. Okay, so how how would you feel if, you know, you stayed at home versus me? Well, well first of all, let me answer the question. Yeah. There, there is go. no rule or standard. Well, I mean I think there is a standard. Yeah. Just I, like I would say the main thing that's happening. Society will tell yeah. you the man should be the breadwinner in mm-hmm. the home. But that's not a rule. No, but I it's, think it's whatever you're comfortable with. Because I know at some point their pride is going to come into. Yeah. The, the I, I want to say it's something that I've matured into. Mm-hmm. Um, growing up, I'm used to, you know, my dad being the breadwinner. Society has always told me the man is the breadwinner. Mm-hmm. Um, but since I've been married and I understand how at least our finances work at this point it really doesn't matter yeah um because i leave right there right like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean technically like i feel like it's almost like a little competition like yeah but even then it's like at this point the the idea of like i mean i guess technically i'm the breadwinner mm-hmm. but we both win bread here Ooh, um i like that so <laughs> And it's just like, okay, we both direct deposit into the same account. Yeah. There's nowhere where it says Jock's money or Jackie money. So it's just one big pot at this point in our relationship. What difference does it make? Like, it's not even what difference does it make. It doesn't, it doesn't show. There's no point where it's like, Jock's makes this much, Jackie makes this much. I just know at the end of each week, Jock's and Jackie have this amount of money. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I guess that would maybe come more into play in a situation where like maybe your finances are separate so you think about it more like I don't it doesn't really come into play because all the money goes into one place and it comes out of one place it's just one big pot it's not segmented into oh jocks pays the mortgage Jackie pays this yeah, yeah. like I mean it is what it is like would you feel away if you stayed at home and I would. yes but that's just my I, <laughs> <laughs> now that's a whole nother question I ain't staying at home but that's just because I like to work Okay. Um, but I would so go I. crazy. Okay, you go work. I never told you don't work. I'm just saying. Like in this scenario, <clears throat> apparently they feel that one person, you know, depending on how their finances are situated, one person, it would make sense for one of them to stay home and mm-hmm. one of them to work. So stay home with like a child. They, yeah. Yeah. Wait, I might have missed a part. He says they have a child? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't say that earlier, but yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there's a child involved, I mean, I know what we would do. Yeah. The the reason, and I don't have a problem. I'm going to state it first. I don't have a problem if a man stays home, but. Long pause. Yeah. Okay. Well, what if I was a woman like- should stay home? Sorry. <laughs> It canceled. I, I, it's just in my mind. In my mind, I can't see it any other way. Okay, like, but let's say I was making like Dwayne Wade money, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and you was making like don't don't put me too far down. But okay, like, let's say you were making like the money I make now. Whatever, one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Uh huh. No, I don't make that money now. For anybody listening, go ahead. I'm just saying. Uh huh. So would you stay home? No. Why do I need to stay home? Why? Because I'm making Dwayne Wade money. Okay. <laughs> but here's the thing. The, the the idea that one of us has to stay home is the first this thing. This is true. No, we don't have to stay home. We don't have to do anything. Exactly. We do what we feel comfortable with. Yeah. Which and, is what I started off saying. Yeah. This one, I don't have a problem with that. But if we did come to the conclusion that one of us needed to stay home, that's just such a large gap in pay. But It is. But you can live off of $120,000. <clears throat> exactly. So... But you, in my you opinion, throw away all that other? <laughs> in my opinion, I feel more comfortable with the woman staying home mm-hmm. because. And y'all don't come for him because I know this. Already. Yes. Like. So, so like, my value in the home is not maximized there. Mm-hmm. Like, and as far as like. Okay. <clears throat> I I, I never mean, heard you say that out loud. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Like, I know what I'm good at, and I know what I'm not good at. Right. I'm not good at, you know, housemaking or changing diaper. I don't want this to sound sexist. Like, I don't think this is what women are bit made well, yeah. here for. But no, but like, like, you personally. For I've me personally, change, like, that's diaper. not where I think I would be maximized. <laughs> would I help in those situations? Of course. Is that my full-time position? I don't think so. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you wouldn't get no raise. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> I say you wouldn't get no raise. Like, yeah, like, that's not what I would be good at. Mm -hmm. Um, Do I think my wife would be better at it than me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's shown some of these qualities. um, And I, in my, just knowing the way our relationship is, I feel like you would want to be with our child Mm -hmm. throughout the day rather than someone else. And probably even more so rather than me. So... (laughs) So, I mean, you've seen me babysit. Like, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That, that's just, I think it's what's comfortable to the couple. Um, I don't want to put it as a man and woman thing. Yeah. But I do, I mean, I'll be honest, I do have a certain view of men and women in those roles, though, as far as Same. full-time. Yeah. Um. I think a man should have a desire to lead his household in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think he should shy away from helping in that way yeah. as well. But leading from that position, I feel like he should be out working. Yeah. I don't know too many men who stay at home. I know a few who want to. Wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're like <clears> our <throat> age. But I, I think, yeah, you, you do what works for you. And I don't think that... 
every decision that you guys make or like that any couple makes should be solely based on finances yeah you know like just because one person makes x amount and the other person makes like way less or whatever like so now you have to stay home. But what if your desire, like, what if he loves what he's doing? Yeah. Or what if you love what you're doing? Then that doesn't mean that, like, now all of a sudden you should stay home just because you're the one making more. I mean, making less. Um, so do what works. And not every decision has to be based on money. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Because yeah. sometimes it, it's not always for forever. Like, you're not always going to be yeah. home. Always. Like. It could just be for a little while, for a little season, and then you're right back to work. <laughs> Hopefully, I got out of that clean and I didn't uh, say too many things to put Not my foot in my good. mouth. But yeah. I got you. Okay. Um, yeah. Again, email us at michellematters at gmail.com. Yeah. Text us, you know, or send us messages on any of the socials. Yes. Um, get in contact with us. All right. All right. Hey, <laughs> It's my window. I can't stand it. It's my window. I, I can't stand it. Who are we shouting out today? So this week, um, I wanted to shout out uh, Created Visuals. Um, it's run by one of my good friends, Gene Lorenzo. Uh, he is a photographer and videographer. Um, I don't even know what he's specializing in. He's good at both. Uh, and he covers small events, big events. Um, he's done weddings. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know he's really, really focused on his um, photography and video editing. But, uh, I mean, if anyone's looking for, like, a headshot, um, graduation pictures, right. uh, he has a lot of good work. You can check him out on uh, Instagram. Um, he has a website. Created K R I eight E D V I S U A L S dot com. <laughs> created visuals. I had to spell it out. Yeah, you um, <clears throat> we'll put it in the description for sure. But yeah, uh, super professional. Um, he gets the work back to you on time. Um, and I know a lot of people like. I don't know if they feel intimidated, but I feel like everyone looks for like a good videographer, photographer for different events, mm-hmm. and there's so many different options. Um, but this is someone that I back personally and yeah. I would recommend and I am recommending to you guys. So definitely check him out. Um, I definitely put all his uh, social media accounts and a link to his website. Yeah. There uh, are some shots like we've seen him take some shots. And we're yeah. just like, what? This is what the picture came out like? Yeah. Like I've seen him work <laughs> some magic. Like he took a he did a photo shoot in our backyard and I was like, that's my backyard. So. Um, and created as a company is, I mean, they, they do a lot of other things as well. So he'll, uh, develop your pictures. I've seen him put pictures on, like on canvases and they do a lot of t-shirt work and different things. So, um, they also carry a wider range, but I think I'll cover that in a different business spotlight. Mm-hmm. Um, but for this one, definitely check out creative visuals. Uh, he's a good friend. Tell him I sent you. Might not get you a discount, but just tell them I sent you. <laughs> no discount. No discount. <laughs> so, yeah. Check out Created Visuals. All right. So, I think that's the end. Yes. Thanks yes. for tuning in. Appreciate y'all. All uh, right. I'll talk to y'all next time. See ya. Bye. When I pull up on you, then I might swear, I Give a long deuce, deuce, I That you might work, I When I pull up on you, then I might swear, I Give a long deuce, deuce, I That you might work, I That you might work. That you might work.